Hey everybody, Flip here, and welcome on back to Building with Flip. I've got an awesome episode planned here today. We've got a bunch of great projects we're going to be tackling, and oh my gosh, has a lot of stuff happened, folks. Be sure to click that like button down below if you're excited for today's episode, but without any further ado, we've got a lot of catching up to do. We've been working like crazy on the live stream, so folks, let's jump right into it. Coming over to the castle where we are going to be getting ourselves started for today, I've been adding in a few of these oak leaves throughout this entire area, folks, and oh my gosh, have we done a lot of work on this guy. There is a lot of stuff to be showing off here, and I think the best way to do this is to start this episode off with a good old-fashioned time lapse and get some terraforming done. With three oak leaves to spare, we now have oak leaves around the entire area, making it a little bit better. Not quite the same level that we had done over here previously with the coarse dirt and everything like that, but I just want to get a little bit of a fix for it so it looked nice. And the FWIP mob farm guarantee in all terraforming projects, if you stand right over here and listen carefully, you can hear zombies. Yep, that's, uh, that's you know, it's a good FWIP terraforming project when there are zombies and other mobs inside of it. That is a pretty accurate statement right there. But folks, I've got a new shiny thing, a netherite helmet, which means we have full netherite gear, which is very, very important. If we head back into our starter house that we made over here and take a look at the book, then we have gather netherite ingot. We can upgrade all of our tools, which we've been doing. Full beacon gives access to the old beacon. Still got to work on that one. And then the fully enchanted netherite armor and road being completed gives access to use the elytra again if not already in the end and folks we've done both of those which is amazing and if i can stop looking through the window we're just we're just gonna right there look at that right there hello now <laughs> but folks we've done it we have access to the old world via a road and we have access to our elytra from having fully enchanted netherite armor and oh my gosh, we spent a good while down in the nether areas doing a lot of exploding of the TNT, doing a lot of the mining of that sort of stuff, and uh, stopping a bunch of lava from being around, and that was absolutely um, painful. Very, very painful. I see why netherite is so difficult to get. But that being said, folks, we are back over here in the old world, and it is time for us to head on home for today's project. We are going to be moving back to the old part of the world. We're not done with here quite yet. But the one I want to tackle today it involves going back home and it very much needs an elytra to not make it completely terrible. So folks, let's kick this off one more time into good old-fashioned time-lapse mode while we finish up this road and I will meet you on the other side. <laughs>
Oh man, does this feel good to be flying around again. Oh my gosh, I have actually missed using the Elytra. It is so very nice to have this back. We can actually fly quickly from place to place, catch up on everything, and oh my gosh, we are good to go here, folks. I'm super excited. If you haven't seen it already or couldn't tell from the thumbnail or anything like that, we are going to be working on an insane map room today. I want to take the entire world map we have over there, which we'll jump to in a sec, and add on the entire section that we've been working on recently. But first and foremost, I've got a gearbox. Look at how many netherite tools I have. We got four pickaxes, three shovels, and then we got all these things over here, which we desperately need to repair. That being said, flying over the city where I'm hoping we can do a lot of awesome build projects coming up here soon. I'm super excited to be jumping back into this one here and getting a lot of work done. We are going to be creating this epic map room, and it's almost like hidden cavern of sorts, or hidden like underground room, like probably over in this area right here. I'm not too certain on where I want to locate it quite yet, but the map itself is hidden down underground right over here. As you can see, we have this entire section mapped out from all the way up here to the port city where we're standing right there underground right now over to our custom mountains, through the Nordic the Nordic themed village, we've got the farming village, we've got the desert village, which is desert city, sorry, that we're just in down there, and everything else going down yonder that way. A big thing for me is map runes need to be big and they gotta be square. They gotta be pretty equal, or at least a rectangle. They can't just have like a random jut off right over there and turn it into an L shape. So unfortunately, what we've gotta do here is we've gotta figure out how far over that way we need to go in order to discover the entire fantasy village with maps. These are all the base level maps. It's gonna be a big room. Thankfully, the piglin farm that we set up for trading and everything produces a lot of leather. So I've got this over here. It is six long or six wide by 22 long. And that's a lot of maps. It's 132 if I did my math correctly here, which means we need a lot of paper, we need a lot of iron, and we need a lot of redstone. Sugarcane might be a little tight. I will have to check how much our farm actually produced, but there's a quite a few stacks of them right in here. And then over here we've got, of course, we have a lot of redstone. Why, why would I ever use redstone? I have a whole shulker box dedicated to redstone supplies, but I, I don't. Iron, on the other hand, oh, we've got plenty. Look at that. All right, that is more than enough, hopefully. And that is all of the compasses we are going to need. Oh my gosh, this is going to be a big project. Please, 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 please. That's enough for this, but that's not going to keep very much afterwards. There we go, 134 maps. I need a lot more rockets, which I'm going to go handle there soon. But it is time for me to get some miles in here, flying around, and we're going to see how many maps it takes to fill this entire area. I really hope it's only 134. And there we have it. That is the corner of this one done. Woo! All right, that's going to be a fun project to map all this. I think I've got about four or five hours of mapping ahead of me here, and a lot more than 134 maps. I don't know why I thought it'd be six. I don't know why at all I thought that. But it's time for me to get this stuff done. Well, this is a great find. So here's my older maps. You can see the numbers on them. But as we start following these, you can see that 358, 359, and so on. They're going to keep moving. So like those two are out of order. And that'll be an easy, easy way for me to actually be able to like tell how far over we're going. So that's going to be really, really nice. But that also means that 356 to like, it's like 13 or 14 maps, I think. We extended it by six originally, right? Well, I had to move it over another four blocks to even get the corner of this one. So I have got so much mapping here ahead of me, folks. If anything interesting happens along the way, I'll let you know. Our elytra might break. It's definitely going to need to be repaired before we finish this. Uh... <laughs> And with these last maps, we're coming across the very, very final corner of this place. Oh, oh, there's even a ruined portal down here. Is there a good chest? I have no space in my inventory at all. The store thinks it's full. No, there's one more. Oh, I forgot one. Well, now, now we are done. This is the very, very far corner of the bottom right of the map. Everything else has been finished. You know what really sucks about doing all this? This is most definitely not the final resting point for this map here. This is just a temporary holding point to get it all on the ground, and I'm gonna be moving it all here later again in today's episode. And there we have it, folks. 
That is looking absolutely amazing. I am so surprised we were able to do all of this today. I'm really not. It's been like four hours. I really shouldn't be too surprised about that one. But these are all brand new additions to the maps here, which is great. I wasn't expecting this to be so dark. I was The crimson wood really, really stands out as well as the basalt. That's not even blackstone. That's basalt right there. And it is just dark. It is time that we fly on out here real quick. And I don't even have a sword on me. It's going to be a little dangerous here. But what I want to be doing is this region right back in here, right along where this little road is planted, is actually going to be housing. Not housing, but it's going to be transformed into a giant mountainous area, kind of like a hilltop area. I think about like the Red Keep in Game of Thrones where it just kind of works its way up a hill. This is going to be a giant palace in here. I want the map room, wherever the heck the map room is, over right over there. There we can see it, right, that guy right in there. I want it to be down underground underneath this thing. So folks, let's go ahead and kick this off in a good old-fashioned time-lapse mode and dig a huge hole. What can I say except, wow, that is a very, very big wall. When it's up on the wall like this and not on the floor, it feels so much larger. Just the scale of this is absolutely massive. I think eventually this wall is going to be pushed back as well. Because right now I think that the room is a little too short for how big this thing is over here. But I got all the item frames up on the side, miscalculated and made a bunch extra over here. But we've got these in place and now I'm going to have even more because I have to move the whole maps over. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end up with like 20, I'll, I'll end up with like 14 stacks of item frames extra. Well, that'll be really nice, I guess, for future builds. But anyways, it's time to get this whole map over here unfortunately replay mod does not recognize maps being added so i can't really do it through there but folks i'm gonna get this on and then we'll get back to building there it is behind the scaffolding and it is time folks for the grand reveal of our insane map wall so far we don't have the map room feel to it yet but we have the map wall i've got some great ideas in mind on how i can totally transform this and make something really really cool i've got a great idea of what i've seen it's been pretty popular recently it's been pretty popular recently for how to kind of texture the walls going from like the gray concrete gray concrete powder cyan terracotta and then light gray concrete i believe is at the top of it and i'm going to do that and texture these walls to give it a little bit of a fade it'll make the room feel even larger than before but getting this last one of scaffolding down here there we have it that is insane we're all the way down there. We got the village I'm moving its way up here. We got the ruined castle. We've got papyrus. We've got the city up here where we are standing right up in that point. Over there's our castle. And now finally we have the village right down there. We've got to fill up these spaces and that space. And then the mountains need to really expand and keep moving their way. Because if you think about it, the mountains encompass there, they're going to be coming down throughout here. All of this area is probably going to be mountain range, like that insanely huge chunk of the world. Now, as this map room is insanely large, I want to take a page out of Jerocraft's book. A while ago, he created a map room for his Kingdoms of Grey Main series that he does. And I wanted to, what I really enjoyed from that is he had these little standing areas and bridges and walkways in between where you could walk around and see the map at different layers. So you weren't always down here on the ground staring all the way up at it. So I think I'm going to put one, two, or three of those on the different sides. So maybe one at this point, one right there, and then one at the tippity top. And then I've got to spend some time figuring out how to detail this thing. And then I don't know if we're going to have an entrance today or not, but we have a map. That's the important part.
It's time for a little bit of an update here, everybody, because, oh my gosh, have I been working like crazy. Check this thing out, and I meant to grab the scaffolding there. But I've got the walls in over here, which is looking great. And I started bringing in this beam across the top. I've realized the more they've been working throughout this, you can see all the acacia in the corner over here, is I want to turn this into like one of those ancient vaults and things in like World of Warcraft and everything like that. I'm taking a little bit more inspiration off of that. So I'm thinking about making a big old dial or sorts in here. Maybe this is like a world map that they're using to or some ancient society was able to map the entire world. And then the, the city above like found this underground. And so that's kind of the inspiration route I'm taking for building this thing and actually getting some work done on it because otherwise it wouldn't really make sense to have this giant, giant map here. So I'm thinking like ancient celestial device of sorts that they just found underground and then it gave them power over the world because it's auto updating when things are built. Definitely auto updating here, but y'all get the idea. I'm gonna keep building on it. I'm gonna get everything finished up besides like the base floor in here and then we'll talk about a design that we can do inside of here because I got to think on what I want to do first. Taking a brief little break from our cave and coming over to River Rose because, oh my gosh, I need to see if we still have storage of goods over here, which I'm really hoping. Oh, yes. I thought I had lost these blocks. Where are the bricks? Perfect. That is exactly what I need. I had been able to scrounge up a few bricks from underneath the city in that little storage room over there. I found a, I found a few stacks of it, which is able to get me through what I have so far. But folks, it's looking... A lot different down here. I'm really excited about it, and I went ahead and installed some water at the bottom so we could just do this and I should live. Oh, that scares me every time, but check this out. We've got pillar number one and pillar number two. They've got acacia trap doors as a bit of a railing going all the way around here, but then you can stop and you can look. You can get a better view of the map and an even higher point and an even higher point. And then it just kind of, nope, nope. Yeah, and then and you can be all the way up here, basically at the upper, upper layers of it. I didn't want to have anything going across here. I know realistically you probably would have like a walkway going at this layer so you could get right in the middle and look at it real close. But I feel like that's kind of just something that, yeah, why, why bother with that? Next up, though, in the middle here, I want to create a bit of a foggy glass effect, and I think we can use, we have black stained glass, and I have red stained glass, and I have blue. I feel like the red would kind of complement the warmer colors that we have around here, so I'm thinking if we do, like, red right there, and then, so I'm thinking, like, two layers of red, and then we're going to bring it down and have some black, and then we'll do, like, a red below the black as well, and when we get all the way on top of this, we should see a nice, like, warm, red, dark, foggy effect, which should be really cool. I figured now would be a pretty good time to turn this into a little bit of a time lapse since we've been doing a lot of stutter cuts here. So I was bringing this hole all the way down to bedrock and clearing out everything down there. And oh my gosh, without a beacon, that took a lot longer than I thought it would. But we got that all cleared out and you can see me removing all the little fragments down there. And then I realized I didn't like the stone bricks. So I brought in a bunch of bricks and granite because we brought all those things over here and made it feel more like a pit. And then down at the bottom, I wanted to make it feel like there's wires and pipes going all over the place. So down there, I added some ceiling to give it some glow and then I use some strip acacia log and gold blocks to make it look like pipes going around then created this area here in the center that we can use to kind of walk around and move around and some pathways and something to control the map maybe you could zoom in on certain areas and then on the outside I want to make this area look older and more ancient and ruined so I decided to bring in a bunch of cobblestone mossy stone and just create these pools of water along the outsides and I think I'm gonna make the ceilings drip a little bit of water here too and we've got a lot of other cool stuff to work on I am Fwip, the Bat Hunter. And apparently I really suck. Oh my gosh. Ah! There we go. Okay. There's only like one. There he is. That's the last one. Ah! No. Ah! Ah! We got him. Perfect. But it looks like one more. Sp yeah, there is. There's one more. Okay. Yes. There we go. We are clean of bats now. And we can look. Look upon the map, everybody. Look upon it. And well, look upon the area behind the map. I have started doing that here and I know it's been a long time since the time lapse and everything like that. I figured I would just get that done and get it worked out here. I'd stop the time lapse, did that little clip, and then I came back here and was actually trying to get a screenshot for a thumbnail and was like back in this point and those walls that were coming forward previously, they came out to here. And when you get back to this point, a lot was getting cut off from the screenshot angle for a good old thumbnail here. So I decided to bring this all back out here and continue that, which is why that top part isn't detailed yet. 
and it's really cool. I hope y'all did enjoy this project here today. This is something absolutely absurd that I would never think about doing. Really, except for in the context of this world, it's absolutely massive. And I realized that I never updated the maps right there. I don't really know how I'm gonna get up to those. Maybe some scaffolding. Can we put scaffolding? Oh, you can on top of glass. Perfect. I think I'm gonna need that one and that one and that one. All right, well, I should go update those. And I think what I'm gonna do, I've been playing with the idea in my brain of whether I'm gonna do it or not is bringing leaves and things down to this area. And I feel like some leaves, especially down where all the water is and everything, just making going for that ancient grotto underground vibe and everything like that with that still like this mystical feeling to this place. It looks really weird with that missing out of there right now. But I think I'm gonna bring some plants in here as well. But folks, I will tell y'all what. We have been doing a heck of a lot of work today, and I think this is where I'm going to be calling it quits for today's episode. So thank you all so very much for watching. Please be sure to hit that like button down below if you did enjoy. Click that subscribe button if you are brand new. And also, let me know what project you would like to see tackled next inside this world. I'm thinking we're going to do four or five episodes at a location, and then we'll revisit it and move around again later on. So let me know in the comments below what you would like to see here. I'm absolutely loving working on this world again. So thank you all so very much for the support and everything like that. But folks, I will catch you on the flip side.